here with three powerful women CEO MDs, starting on my far left, Rita Kavashi, CEO MD, Isuzu East Africa. Uh, Sarah Katusha, MD Mediacom, the largest media company in the country. Yes, indeed, and she says that herself. And of course, Jane Karuku, MD Kenya Breweries Limited, which is nearly 100 years old. Tusca is nearly 100 years old? Yes, Tusca, produced, marketed in 1922. So in three years' time, we'll be celebrating 100 years Kenya breweries presence in Kenya. Wow. Yes, yeah. That's huge. It's huge. It's a big deal. It is part of the DNA of Kenya, Tusker. And how much impact do you have on our economy, Jane? So we are we think we are very big. We are just shy of one percent of GDP in Kenya. At the at the stock exchange, mostly most of the years we've been number one until Safaricom came along. <laughs> and equity yeah. is just trying to catch up and once in a while ahead of us. So we are significant in this market. Good Lord. Yeah. And run by a woman. Yes. That's a big deal. That is a big deal. Sarah, what about you guys? You are the biggest, huh? We are the biggest media company, media in, buying agency in, in Kenya and in East Africa. Africa. Um, and growing into Africa, recently opening, uh, opened in Nigeria, uh, growing. And what's that like? Um, different market, different dynamics, yeah. um, learnings. Yeah. Uh, but we are doing well. And, and the numbers are huge there, aren't the, they? The numbers are big in yeah. Nigeria. Yeah. And we are getting our clients actually supporting us, just not in Kenya, but the same clients supporting us in Nigeria. So looking forward to a better Africa footprint, but all good. Rita, mm -hmm. you too. Yes. Big impact as well. Big impact. And you, you're not, you don't fear the competition. No. <laughs> she, she, says that very, she says that very adamantly. Yeah, yeah we don't fear the competition. Yeah. We compete actually mostly within ourselves. What, what, okay. what value can we give to our customers? So we, we cut our shirt right and we go for it. 39% yeah. market share. So we are the leading auto uh, company in the country in terms of share. The business climate right now, Jane, let me f start you. Business climate, is, is it conducive to what you got? I mean, people always drink beer, let's, uh, let's face it. By the way, is there a remedy for, um, for, for a hangover? Uh, I'm, I'm getting some messages. Is there a remedy for a hangover? No, you should. <laughs> Jeff, you should not get what a hangover. A lock, you, know, no, no, no. <laughs> you should not get a hangover. The, the rule yes. and the thing is, yes. make sure you eat uh -huh. and then you drink. And as you're drinking, you have a lot of water. There'll be no hangover. Please do not take medicine for hangover. <laughs> Just drink responsibly. <laughs> Let me it's, ask you this. Does it have to be water? Can it be juice or...? Uh, yeah, liquid. I liquid. mean, liquid other than alcohol to just... Yes. Give your... your space yourself. Uh, just space but yourself. But eat first. You, ha you can't drink on an empty stomach. You have to eat. Mumeskia. Yeah. <laughs> you have to. <laughs> <laughs> Rita, uh -huh. Isuzu's uh -huh. contribute to the majority of the matatus that are on the roads. Uh -huh. And what are you all doing about road safety? We're doing a lot on, on road safety. Uh, Bob and I used to belong to the National uh, Safety Authority and, and EABL was also in total. And our role was actually sensitization uh, of consumers around road safety. We run campaign, we do education uh, drives for Matatu operators. We train uh, drivers at our facility before they take a new product. We train them on safety, troubleshooting. Uh, we work closely with NTSA and other like-minded companies to promote safety on our roads. Yeah. yeah. By the way, how many Isuzu lorries or trucks or do, do you produce in a month, do, do, do average? We produce about 500 units in a, in a good month and we sell about 450. A month. Yeah. Is that East and Central or East Africa? East Africa. Uh -huh. Yeah. That's a big deal. But Kenya is, is a bigger it's market. It's a big market. Yeah, 400 is Kenya. And then wh who's next? Tanzania, Uganda? Uh, then Uganda, mm. then Tanzania. Well, still growing, branching out to, towards Eastern Congo? Yeah, it, we look, in our business in Africa, we, look, we, we don't have borders, so to speak. We have a plant in South Africa, we have a plant in Egypt, and we have the plant in Kenya. And where there's opportunity and a country's best place to serve, then that country 
uh, we, we'll take care of those markets. For instance, Central Africa, Malawi, Zambia, uh, countries under Comesa, we take advantage of trading blocks and, and serve those markets. So yes, uh, as these countries' economies continue to grow, we think we have a very strategic plant here in Nairobi to serve the entire of East and Central. Yeah. yeah. Sarah, a lot of women, young women, are looking at you right now, and they see a very young lady who's in a very powerful position. And the question they're obviously asking is, how do I get there? Without being this generation's microwave uh, thinking of, you know, I want it right now, which will not happen. What do you tell them? I think it's a journey. Uh, you, have been, you have to be willing to take the time and to put the efforts. Um, I think your environment helps a lot. Um, I always say if you're a leader, whether male or female, uh, be able to allow younger, young women to come to the table and not just to sit at the table, but allow them to be heard and allow them to be listened to and actually take action for what they're saying. I think sometimes women get opportunities, but then they do not get the space to actually be heard. So you're there, but you're not getting the opportunity to actually do much. Uh, and equality is not just about being there. It's about being there and doing something. So it's not just about women, but it's about being women in leadership. Um, in leadership at Mediacom, we are about 50% women, 50% men. Uh, the team, however, is about 80% women, and we are actually working to see whether to balance it more with men. <laughs> uh, but how do you actually give young women yes. An opportunity to feel they are, it's a safe place for them to work, a safe place for them to actually share their opinions, a safe place for them to be ambitious, that ambition is not a bad thing, that by, by being assertive they're not being aggressive, um, and tr teaching them and training them that how do you actually, how do you learn to raise your hand? Mm. Uh, and when you have an opportunity, speak up. Um, timid, yes. I think there are men who are timid, there are women who are timid. Mm. It's a personality. Mm. And it's how do you make these people comfortable enough to feel that this work environment allows me to actually uh, be able to speak up and to do something. I always say the other thing is a lot of leadership is not, as she said, it's not given, it's taken. Yeah. Uh, and if there's an opportunity, how do you actually give yourself for that opportunity mm. and say, I would like to do this, you know, I want to do this, mm. um, as opposed to always waiting to be picked. Our culture still will pick a man instead of picking a woman. Yeah. So if you're a woman, then how do you try to always raise your hand and say, I'm willing to do this role, I'm willing to take this challenge, and then work hard. It's easy for you to say, because you are where you are now. Even before, you know, I think the first time when I actually moved to media, I went to my boss and I said, I'm tired of what I'm doing currently, I want a challenge. Mm. And I was given a challenge and it was the best thing that ever happened for me was actually moving from a creative agency to a media agency. I think if I hadn't asked, I would still possibly be doing creative yeah. somewhere. Yeah. Um, but I think for leaders is to create a space where young people feel free to actually ask. And they don't feel, oh, if I ask, what will my boss say? I'm not ready. Mm. You're always ready. The fear of rejection. Yes. Jane, I didn't let you get a chance to explain about the business climate. I think I was too busy on the hangover thing, but um, I apologize. <laughs> business climate, staying number one in this business. And you know there's a lot of competition. What's the business climate like? It is tough. It, I think it's tough. And I think uh, you should take it for granted that at KBO, we are where we are from a share perspective by accident. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of many years of learning, many years of people working on strategies, yeah. understanding the consumer, having the right portfolio place. So you're, you're offering to everyone what they deserve. Many, area, many years of working with stakeholders, working with Kenya government, I think. We are the biggest taxpayer from an excise perspective. So of course, we are, we are sort of like sometimes joined in the hip on not very good conversations, sometimes very good conversations yeah. on tax, yeah. uh, working with other stakeholders like farmers. Yeah. Um, we, we, we drive uh, loyalty through our farming community. So right now we have 45,000 farmers, either giving us sorghum or barley in this market mm -hmm. and making very uh, clear choices and very deliberate choices as a company. So for example, we, have, we source 80% of all our raw materials in this country locally. So what that does, we grow a lot of loyalty with people like you, Jeff, so I'm sure you like our brand. So you I go love to, your brand. You go to New York and you love Tasca. Can you imagine? That is because of that work that, that we do internally. Yeah. And then also hiring, right? So 
we are quite competitive in terms of hiring. Um, we are, I'm very proud about what we are doing with women in terms of the ratios. Um, we've just announced something quite, uh, quite disruptive. We are giving uh, six maternity leave six months. Six months? months? Because we want to encourage women and we are saying, in our industry, we need women to work and thrive and we, are, we want you not to choose. Wow. We don't want you to choose to either work or have a family because A, we do need women and the diversity that, that is required to make a business successful. We also need future generations even to consume our products, yeah. I dare say. But let me ask you yeah. this, uh, yeah. Jane. Mm. The love of imported beer, for instance. Yeah. You know, there's a whole bunch of imported uh, European beers mm. that are on the market. Mm. Does, d does that disrupt your, your, your market? It doesn't. I mean, I don't want to sound arrogant, but it doesn't because we are also working in that space. I think what you're describing is a premium segment. Yes. Okay. We have our premium beers. So we have a Tasca premium ale. We I hope you've tasted that. I we we launched add, recently, I which is fantastic. You did, you did an ad of the legend, yeah, the legend. I remember. Yeah. That's so me. we have premium beers as well, Tusca Malt, yes. <laughs> Tusca Light, yes. premium yeah. ale, yeah. Guinness. So we have Hop House 13. So we are trying to keep up with the consumer and we are addressing that consumer. Okay. Because that's what we keep us afloat, but a lot of hard work. Ladies, I want to take a break and come back and ask you this one question. Latifa has the most amazing question. The most difficult decision each of you have ever had to make. Okay. Think about it as we take a break. My goodness, this show is smoking. Does any one of you want to press my extinguisher? Do you, do you, do you want to know how it works? <laughs> yeah, ladies, no extinguisher. <laughs> Keep tweeting at Quinanga Jeff at Citizen TV. Can the hashtag is JK Live. JK Live takes a break. We'll be back in a moment. And your tweets and SMSs, we're going to read all those as well. Stay with us. Back in a moment. <laughs> And welcome back to Jeff Kinangi Live here at Citizen Television with three amazing women, Jane Karuku, Sarah Katusia, and Rita Kavashe in the house. The tweets coming in so thick and so fast. Jane, we'll start with you. Hello, I'm Ferdinand Oguma. Jane Karuku is my MD, kindly appreciator for me for creating an enabling environment for us to aspire, grow, and win. Thank you. Male, man, sending this. John Kianda, who loves sports and was watching the third place playoff between Nigeria and Tunisia, says he'll watch it in the highlights. He prefers this. <laughs> Look at that. Wonderful. Uh, Maina Kageni. Maina, Diego Kome. He should be asleep. He has a show in the morning. He says, I am not at all surprised by these super women success, having worked with all of them. Oh, really? Maina, okay. I can testify that they understand their customers so well and have amazing vision. What surprises me, though, is why they are not in government. Oh, whoa. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Rita. Ah. Rita, start with you. Oh, by the way, Bill Lay sends his greetings along with some guy called Steve. Thank you. <laughs> That's, I'm just passing yes. on. So why aren't you in government? Like Mina asks? I think we, we participate yeah. in government. We are in government. I'm the chair of the Kenya Roads Board. That is doing part of, of, of government work. Uh, as the vice chair of KEPSA, our work is purely to engage with government. So, and, and it is much better now than it was before when it comes to interaction and engagement and working together with government. I'm having a great time working with the Minister of Industry in developing the auto policy. Yeah. It's, it's, it's amazing this time in our, in our country's history that there is so much integration between government and private sector. So mm -hmm. I don't feel like I am missing out in government work, mm -hmm. only that I am doing it from private sector All side. Right. Mm -hmm. Sarah, would you work for government? Um, would I? Maybe, yes. Um, okay. Actually, however, we work for the government. I have clients who are in the government. Uh -huh. um, I've worked on Brand Kenya before. Uh -huh. I work on Kenya Tourism Board. So I think in advertising, you get to work for every sector. So I have government clients, I have uh, motor clients, telecom. So I think it's being in the private sector, but being open to collaborate with mm -hmm. the government uh, and to work with them. Um, have I thought of 
working for the government. Um, not yet. I, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> Very honest. Mm -hmm. Jane, would you? No, I think we work for government. I said we are the biggest taxpayer. Yeah. yeah. So we are giving a lot of revenue. Yeah. And therefore we are contributing. Mm -hmm. And I think like Rita says, we sit at Kenya Association of Manufacturers with Rita. Mm -hmm. And we do a lot of advocacy work with government to make sure there are right policies to make Kenya thrive. So we are holding the hands. And I'm also the chairperson of Vision 2030. Yes. So I'm kind of in government. Look at that. She's my chair. Yeah. She's your chair. And we are in the same board with Rita as well, yeah. Oh my goodness. This is too incestuous. <laughs> <laughs> Vimal Shah has a question. But before I go to Vimal's question, uh, I, the question I asked you before the break, yeah. starting with you, Rita, yeah. the toughest decision you've ever had to make? It was in 2009, I had an opportunity to go and set up an export process for our business in South Africa. And I left my nine-year-old daughter at home here in Nairobi and I took that trip because I knew it had something to do with my next job opportunity because in Kenya I had only worked for one CEO so I had not been exposed to the bigger organization for them to make a decision on whether I will be the right candidate to take up a senior role. So when I came back uh, three months later, because then I organized myself to come and take her to, to South Africa with me, she came from upstairs walking. I left her crawling, but I found her walking. walking. So I feel like I missed a very, very important part of her growing. So it was a tough decision for me uh, to have made, but well, I made it. That's the cost of leadership. How old is she now? 10. Wow. Amazing. That's a, that's a great story. Sarah? Oh, I don't know. I think um, one of the toughest decisions I've ever had to make for me was moving to Tanzania. Um, mm. I had a sick brother at the time. Uh, it was really tough. Uh, really, really tough. Um, he actually had leukemia, has, but he's quite well now. And being, you know, I think I was on a plane every two days because I was not willing to go to Tanzania. I was just not willing, I was not ready to leave. Um, and living at that moment in time, I think it was one of the difficult things I've ever had to do. And I'm very close knit with my siblings. Yeah, how did you stay um, focused? Oh, well, on your job? oh, I don't know. I think I had a good team that helped me stay focused. Yeah. I had a very supportive boss uh, yeah. in Tanzania, she was fantastic. Um, but more so, uh, my family really helped in just grounding me and calling me every day. Uh, and I came back home every two, three days. And your brother's good now? He's fantastic. Uh, yes, he's very well, actually. Yes. But it was so difficult. <coughs> I almost, I think, quit. I was like, maybe I, need to, maybe I can't. Maybe I really cannot move. Maybe I should just stay in Kenya. Wow. But then if you look at it, it was the best thing I ever did. Wow. But it was quite difficult. Yeah, at the time. Yes. Jane, toughest decision. Yeah, so, so I'll go back to my early career. Uh, I think when I was on the leadership journey. And I remember Comesa had just been signed on and I was working for Cadbury's. And because now we were Comesa now, we were open, we opened our market before Kenya was ready. And I think we are still suffering those results oh, even, I mean, the result of that, those decisions even now. So we had to, clo I had to close uh, half the factory and send more than half the people home for just 15% of net contribution. And the reason I couldn't refuse because the numbers were numbers. Mm. You, they can't lie. Mm. They make sense. You have a, a plant in Egypt. You have one in South Africa. You have one in Mauritius. You're in Comesa. You're in duty free zone. And, and because you're, you're supposed to be a leader, you have to call as it is because yeah. business dictates that that's the right decision. Yeah. But on the other hand, your heart is on these people. We're just going to be jobless. And at the kind of, at the time, the profile of that employee they would not likely get a job somewhere else. So it's, it's I mean, you, couldn't, you can't sleep, because I'm sending, I think there were about 55, 155 people wow. you're sending home, home for 15% sort of contribution, so it's a no-brainer. You have to deal with Kenya unions, your friends. So, <laughs> and you're a young lady, I was very young at the time, and I, I think it was, it was very hard, and I always say that the defining moment of my leadership journey was that time because you were, you had to stand on the, take all the bullets 
because you know you're doing the right thing. However much as a person it pains you, however much the society and the industry and the, your other fellow employees and colleagues yeah. don't agree with you. Wow. So that was very tough for me. Wow. Yeah. But you know, if it was a man, you probably wouldn't think that way, by the no. way. Huh? No. You just have done it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Watch your end. <laughs> <laughs> Women lead from the hearts. <laughs> Listen to this. Yeah. House Majority Leader, Aidan Duale, says, I can confirm I went to college with Rita and she is a brilliant and strong leader. As alumni, we are proud of her and say hello to all those great women. Okay. House Majority Leader Eden Dwale. Vimal Shah earlier on had said, Hey, Jeff, fantastic show with the powerful ladies. Ask them what happened when they had to take the decision of family or career, and what was the dilemma? Rita, you told us about your daughter mm -hmm. leaving her crawling, finding her walking, family, for work. Yeah, so for me, uh, I'm lucky. There are those moments that uh, you will have to not be in a school event and all that. But I'm lucky to work for an organization that uh, supports work-life integration. So my organization, there is no, my work and my life, they are part of the business that I do. Uh, I can, my boss can be in town when we were General Motors for a board meeting and I have a school event. And he comes just for the board meeting, do some business discussion, and then he takes the flight back. I would leave him in the office and tell him, look, my daughter has a function. I have to rush to school, stay in the office and work. I will go and catch up with you. So I'm creating that environment, like Jane has said, for, for my people to also uh, be able to take leadership position, especially my female employees to take leadership position as well as run their families by allowing the space for them to be leaders and also to take care of their family. For instance, flexi time, they can work at home. Uh, if they're not in the factory floor, they can work at home, they can work remotely. And uh, yes, so creating the balance. And uh, maybe at the early years, you're like, okay, I have to really give my, my time and, and do the work which we did at some point because yeah. work needed to be done and you arrange yourself to, for someone to take care of your family. For instance, for me, my daughter had to leave her with a relative because I couldn't trust a house help. A house help could just quit. Mm -hmm. So I had to get an elderly relative to help me with this responsibility as I take up this new assignment. And it's worked fine. And children, when you tell them, in fact, you develop them to be very responsible very early when you have to do the balance. But it should not be extreme. But now that I know what a female employee goes through in their leadership journey, it is now my responsibility as a leader, as Jenny Sang, she did that because she, she knows that this is what will help a female employee to take up leadership position and as well take care of the family. So creating those opportunities for female employees to grow and to work by creating the infrastructure that supports them to be. Sarah, a lot of people are asking whether you're married, huh? A lot, a lot of guys, <laughs> not just here on the floor, <laughs> but I, I, they're not getting, getting a lot of messages. Is, is she married? Are you asking me? Yeah, I am. Oh, no, I'm not. Um, Bob, uh, did you hear that, Bob? <laughs> 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 so I think I've not had the, you know, the family, yeah. child, or husband yeah. situation. But I always say is, it's the balance for your life first. Uh, even if you have no family or no uh, husband or child, how do you balance so you're not also spending all your time in the office? Mm -hmm. Advertising is really bad at this. Um, I'm sure you know everyone knows, and it's very late night, late night, late night. And you know, I'm very proud to say at Mediacom, you know, our working late is less than five percent. And it's not because we don't have the work, it's how we prioritize the work. And what we do for young uh, moms, and you know, I have a couple who get pregnant at the job, I've had to hire someone when she was pregnant. And I had to give her the um, confidence that she can come to the team, she will be able to manage. And she told me, Sarah, I'm young, I'm just getting married, I'm gonna have two, three kids. And said, yes, come on board. And she can work at home, uh, she comes in, she can come in later, she can leave early. For me, it's about the responsibility for her or for any woman to do the work they have to do, whether at home or at work. And creating a space where the woman feels that 
I'm not under pressure to then um, deny all my responsibilities mm -hmm. because I have to do a certain job. Mm -hmm. um, I think we are not, none of us, we are not doctors. Uh, we don't run Nairobi Hospital. So at some point, <laughs> it's about prioritizing, <laughs> right? And being very sure that family is important, yeah. work is important. Yeah. Okay, yeah. you mentioned your family is very important. You had a sick brother and it, that, you know, kind of tore your heart and really you you almost lost, you know, quit your job. But are you afraid you might wake up one of these days and find yourself you're 40 years old and you're still chasing whatever it is you're chasing and there's nothing wrong with that, right? <laughs> I'm not chasing anything, Jeff. But, but you um, are I'm on not, the not rise, married. you're flying. Um, I think, you know, I think culture forces women to want to get married as a goal. I don't work and I think I'm very lucky to come from a family that, you know, my dad just asks, are you happy? Mm. And when I say yes, <laughs> he's like, okay, cool. And when you ask him, you don't want to know whether I'm going to get married. Right. And he's like, well, do you want to get married? And for me, that is very important because do I want to get married? I don't know. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. But being a whole person, whether married or not married, honestly, I'm not chasing anything in the corporate ladder, for sure. Um, I'm happy. I'm a very happy person. I'm content with my life as it is. Um, marriage for me is not a goal. If it comes, it comes. If it doesn't, it doesn't. It's whatever, you know, kisera, sera, whatever happens, happens. Kisera, <laughs> sera. You heard that, fellas? <coughs> <laughs> Enough said. Jane, how about you, family, yeah. work, commitments? Mm. I think I've always been very clear. I had to have family and first things first. I'm always first things first and family, of course, is always first. And also, I'm also an ambitious person, so also the side of the work had to happen. Does it work perfectly? Not all the time. But I think uh, if I look back, uh, I'd made a very good decision earlier on in my career to stop working and raise a family and I only went back after my kids were reasonably old. Mm. So if I look back now, it didn't stop anything. But when you're a teacher, you think, if I even go away for six months, mm. if I go away for a month or two years, I'll find the world gone. But actually the world doesn't go anywhere mm. and you'll have the time. And I, so I think the, the thing is that, what do you as a person want? Just like her, she's not chasing anything. We are all very different. There are some people who just, I just want kids. Mm -hmm. I want a family, I want to get married. You must do that alongside whatever you want to. Because if you miss the, if you're not balanced, it won't work. Mm -hmm. Even the corporate work, huh? life won't work. Kiambu Deputy Governor James Nyoro says, great show, Jeff. I agree with these ladies are doing a fantastic job. I worked with Jane at Agra and she broke new grounds there. Manu Chandaria, again. Manu, aren't you asleep yet? <laughs> he wants to know, is there breastfeeding places in your businesses? Of course. Of course. I never thought of that, by the way. Go on, explain. <laughs> yes, there are breastfeeding places. So when in women the... come back from maternity, you give them a space? We give them a space, yes. Let me describe the space. Go on. <laughs> She's more Please describe the space. <laughs> so it's uh, this beautiful room with beautiful curtains and colors on the wall, with beautiful coaches for the mom to sit, relax, and press the milk, with a sink and a refrigerator, mm. with cans to put the milk. So it's not just a room, it is a special, comfortable room. Challenge taken. <laughs> <laughs> Challenge taken. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, we're going to go read some tweets and SMSs. Okay. Stand by. I'll read them here and you can respond, okay? Let's go. Tweets. First up, Kennedy Atinda says, For one to succeed, you must walk away from the crowd and climb the ladder, irrespective of the width of the ladder. Be and because where there is crowd, the mediocrity sounds louder. Okay, what's your point, Kennedy? <laughs> Lisa Cherono says it's about time women take the seat at the table and hold their ground while ensuring empowerment, stability and growth to young leaders in this competitive world. We need to climb the male dominated roles higher. I guess yo, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Jeremiah Karaoke, great to hear how the ladies got companies that identified, walked with them and prepared them for the top level leadership. Are they doing the same for younger generation of women? Okay. 
Yes, we are. Um, we actually have a women empowerment program called we uh, Walk the Talk. And for me is, well, I'm not going to be on this job for very long. Uh, who's coming after me? Mm. And how are they preparing the next person? And how is every young woman in the office feeling they have an opportunity? And when we are hiring, how do we ensure we actually hire younger women uh, and give them opportunity in the office? So you don't feel threatened? You're not no. threatened? I cannot be on this job forever, uh, Jeff. No, I'm not. I actually hire people who are smarter than me. I believe in it. Rita, you're, you're nodding. Yes, I'm, I'm nodding. We have a women council uh, that is uh, funded by the company and the head of HR is the sponsor of that program. Mm. And uh, this program is a training program for women to deal with all these issues that women have to deal with to take their role as, as a leader. For instance, training them on women on boards. There are going to be opportunities for women to sit on boards. How, are, how am I preparing uh, our women to sit on boards? Uh, sponsor speakers, like I'll call Jen. Jen, mm. please come and talk to my mm. women on leadership on your journey so that they can also be able to learn from what you have experienced in your life as they prepare for their own journey. So yes, really targeted. It's not about good to have. It's a strategic imperative for the business to fund a women a led um, initiative. Wow, mm. you guys are incredible. It's incredible. Isaac Mbogwa Modoni says, women leadership style tends to be geared towards supporting the efforts of employees and building their skills so they are able to take on greater levels of responsibility. Men are frequently transactional. Breaking down work. <laughs> proud of you women. Hashtag proud of you women. Catherine Smart Foundation says there is no tool for development power, more powerful and effective empowerment of a uh, than effective empowerment of a woman. This country depends on us to provide a what? Hello? Okay. Engineer Lucy Wanjiko. Having worked at GM production section as a process engineer 2006-2007, Rita was a commercial manager then. And the question of whether she feels respected on the factory floor, dot, 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 really resonates with HTTP slash ME dot <laughs> SO. Excited <laughs> to see her as the CEO. Okay. <laughs> All right. Engineer Karaoke Kirave says... Request the ladies to tell you how they are aiding Kenya to bridge the balance of trade deficit. It is now import $15 billion against $5 billion in exports. Are we in a mess? Well, we did explain it sort of. Okay, move along. David Karaoke says, tell Jane Karuku to introduce bonga points for diehard like us. <laughs> we have been loyal for decades. To <laughs> loyal to the brand. <laughs> Wendy Wairimo, fantastic guest today. It is awesome to see that they are powerful ladies who are ahead of us. They inspire those of us that are working towards being game changers in our various fields. Absolutely. That's what we're talking about. Thank you. Um, and Carol says, the panel tonight is a big inspiration to me. These ladies are great leaders worth emulating. I take the challenge as from tonight. Oh, capital letters, capital letters. Senator Beth Mugo. Congratulations, ladies. You certainly make us, the women of Kenya and the world, proud. Women have to be 150 times better than the men to get up there. You are an inspiration to all of us that it can be done. Senator Beth Mugo, well done. Well done. Thank you. Question before we end, wind up. Uh, what next, Rita? What next? <laughs> <laughs> you look at me smiling. What next? Uh, what next is uh, for me is, of course, I still have five years to work uh, before retirement. Uh, and I'm thinking around empowering a uh, young crop of women leaders because I see the value uh, in training. So I think my next cycle will be towards training. Mm. Uh, Sarah, there's a guy called MC Jesse. You know him? 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> MCJ says Sarah Katuja is one down to earth MD and very approachable. She has shared her wisdom with me in media and advertising, and it works like wildfire. Msalimia sana, MC Jesse. Thank you. Sharing, you know, and sharing your knowledge to empower other people. Sharing is caring. Yes. What's next for Sarah Kutushi? Ah, you know, I think I still have quite a bit of years to work. Um, but my, for me, what I'm looking f uh, forward to is what does media and this new world of technology and digital look like? So when I look at where I'm going to be in the next two to three years, possibly I, um, a company or business that actually combines everything together, brings all of it in one space. Uh, it's the trend you, you know, you, you'll start seeing globally is having your, a tech company and a digital company and a media and mm. a creating mm. in the same space. Yeah, despite all the disruptions, um, eh? Yes, yeah. because that's the only way to actually mm. uh, connect with the consumer in the disruption uh, world. Yeah. So that's what I see coming. Um, but currently, I think I have some time. I want to build Mediacom and someone to actually easily step into my shoes. I think I'm very good in that direction. Almost, I think. <laughs> you guys are in a really good space right now. I mean, you, f you look like you're in a really good space. Yes. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Jane, uh, Lulu Saidi. A young lady, wonderful, talented uh, radio presenter here, and she's eight months pregnant. So she's about to go home and take a break. Mm -hmm. So she says, great interview, Jeff. I'm really motivated as a young woman starting her career path. I loved what Jane said about one can take a break and still bounce back. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because there's always that fear. You but leave the scene, yeah. mm. people forget you. It's a long yeah. life, Jeff. It's long, it's a long life. You don't have to be afraid. And by the way, you find people who you left there and just, and you can come and pass through, past them. Yeah. I think she's yeah. evidence, it works. You see, you see, you see. <laughs> so, so it works, it yeah. works. And, and I think we shouldn't have that fear. Yeah. Because if you don't do that, then you regret later. Mm -hmm. Because you'll be, I could have, I should have, mm -hmm. I would have. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to be in that space. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. progressive companies should promote that. Yeah should promote that you can actually take a break mm. uh, and, and, come and come back. back. And we need to create more jobs because yeah. there's such limited jobs in our environment and employment is so high. So someone fe fears that if I stepped out, yeah. then this opportunity will be taken yeah. over by somebody else. So we need to create more jobs so you can have space to do what Jane did. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of doing what Jane did. Oh. Happy oh, birthday yeah. to <laughs> you. Happy <laughs> birthday <laughs> to <laughs> you. Here we go. Happy <laughs> birthday, <laughs> dear Jane. Happy <laughs> birthday <laughs> to oh. you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> Huh? This, this is this is this oh, is your you. staff that did this. They okay, said we have you. to celebrate it, okay, and we are you. honored to do that. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Go on, speech, speech. <laughs> oh, speech, speech, speech. <laughs> as as you cut the cake. Cut a cake to cool us all. Cut a cake to cool us. Cut a cake. Cut a cake. Cut a cake. Thank you. No, thank you. Have a seat, lady. Have a seat. Have a seat. Oh, this is fantastic. Just, yeah. Thank you so much. Happy birthday. Thank and thank you, thank you for you coming much. here on your yeah. birthday. Yeah. Sarah, thank you so much for your time. In the last minute, sorry about Lion King, but you know, there's another king of talk, so you know, it's, it's the same thing. Yeah. Rita, all the way from Taita to Veta, uh -huh. grabbed you from your vacation to come here. I'm yeah. honored. And I hope other women can take a cue from this, because I want to do this more often. You I really, we hope you do. <laughs> you had promise. better, you'd be we'll cast be by Bob and us now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so fulfilled Bob's <laughs> promise. Now I mean, all of you now. <laughs> You've committed. Oh, thank you. Mm. I promise you I will. And this mm. is, has been fantastic and an eye opener and yeah, lots of lots of positive feedback. Mm -hmm. Remember, every Wednesday it's all about those three letters on the keyboard, J, K, L, that follow each other. Thank you so much for being a part of this show. It's been fantastic, powered by Standard Chartered. That's right, folks. And I can't wait to bite into this birthday cake. But in the meantime. Keep tweeting at Queen Anchor Jeff, at Citizen TV Kenya. The hashtag is JK Live. I'll see you back at Radio uh, at Hot 96 tomorrow morning from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. in a couple of hours' time with Professor Hamo. By the way, Professor Hamo said that you sold, 
you had the biggest deal with the government of Kenya, Isuzu. Yes. Right? Yep. I didn't know that. There was a prof who told me. National police. National yes, police service. Police you didn't guys. see them packed yeah. the in my guys. yard? Oh, those Isuzu trucks. Yes. Those, were, those were all yours. Yes. They're taking care of our security. Quality and premium. So we are working for Working Kenya. with the government. We are, we are working, working for, for Kenya. Kenya. For Kenya. <laughs> you guys, you guys, you guys, you should take over this country, you know. You, you just, you know, just let's take it over. We'll work for you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll work together. All right, everybody, thanks so much for watching. Good night, good luck. God bless all these amazing women and women making a change. Thank you. you can continue. Can we have some cake? Yes. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Well done. Well done.